One of the most common ways to dismiss an idea is to say, it's just a coincidence. But how do we know if something really is a coincidence? It's something that even scientists struggle with. When you think of a scientist, you probably imagine a very logical person, someone who accepts facts and observation above all else. But that's not always the case. Let me show you what I mean. Try to remember the first time you looked at a picture of the Earth. You probably noticed that it looked a lot like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle that fit together. They look like this because at one point, they were all connected in one supercontinent called Pangaea about 100 million years ago. And over time, the pieces broke apart and moved away from each other to create the world as we see it today. This idea is called continental drift. This seems obvious to us now, but there was a time when it wasn't obvious to everyone, and it wasn't obvious to most scientists. In the early 1900s, almost no one believed that continents could move or shift around. To explain this, many scientists believed that there was once a huge bridge of land that connected Africa and South America, a bridge that somehow disappeared without a trace. But a German geophysicist named Alfred Wegener believed that Africa and South America seemed to fit together like puzzle pieces precisely because they were connected at one point in one huge mass of land. To test his theory, Wegener looked at the rocks and fossils on the coasts of Africa and South America, and he found that they were remarkably similar. In 1912, he published his findings in his theory of continental drift. You'd think that the scientific community embraced all this evidence, but they didn't. Most scientists dismissed it as just a coincidence. In fact, the idea was so controversial and scientists were so threatened by Wegener's findings that the American Association of Petroleum Geologists held a forum for the sole purpose of trying to tear down the continental drift theory, all because it didn't fit their worldview. Think about that for a second. Scientists, people we expect to be logical and driven by facts, all got together to reject an idea just because they didn't like it even though there was a huge amount of evidence to support that it was true. And they did this even though it's something so obvious that even a child could notice. It wasn't until the 1950s, almost 40 years later, that the scientific opinion began to change and the scientific community began to accept Wegener's continental drift concept. What this shows is that the fact that South America and Africa look like puzzle pieces that fit together wasn't a coincidence at all. The history of science is filled with examples just like this. And this alone should make us skeptical whenever so-called experts dismiss something as just a coincidence. In the words of the Nobel Prize winning physicist Percy Williams Bridgman, coincidence is what you have left over after you've applied a bad theory. And this shouldn't be all that surprising because according to German philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer, all truth passes through three stages. First, it's ridiculed. Second, it's violently opposed. And third, it's accepted as self-evident. And what this suggests is that we should be very careful about immediately dismissing things as mere coincidence. And it also has important implications for many of the things we experience in our everyday lives things we might be tempted to dismiss as just a coincidence. Take, for example, the real-life story of Paul Gratchen. Paul had just started dating a woman named Esther, and he was thinking about asking her to be his girlfriend. He was standing in a deli, paying for a sandwich, when he noticed a dollar bill with the name Esther on it. How strange, he thought to himself, that the name Esther would appear at the exact moment he was thinking of their relationship. For some reason, he decided not to spend it, and instead, he took the bill home with him, something he would never normally do. He decided that this dollar bill would be a funny gift for Esther, and so he put it in a frame, and he gave it to her on the day that he planned to ask her to make the relationship official. But when Esther unwrapped the frame with the dollar bill inside, she didn't laugh. 
she was absolutely speechless. As she stared at the dollar bill, she seemed shocked and confused. After some silence, Paul told her that it wasn't quite the reaction he was hoping for. He asked her if something was wrong. Esther replied that everything was fine, and she happily agreed to date Paul exclusively. Two years went by without any mention of the dollar bill. They grew closer, and Paul eventually proposed to Esther. They got married. And it wasn't until they moved into their new home together that Paul saw the dollar bill again. He was surprised that Esther had kept the dollar after all this time. It was only then that Esther finally revealed why she reacted the way she did to the bill all those years ago. It turns out that when she was 19 years old, she was in an unhappy relationship. It was ending, and in the middle of that breakup, she remembers thinking that she wasn't sure if true love was even real. She decided to leave her fate in the hands of the universe. She took 10 different $1 bills, and on each of them, she wrote her name. She said to herself, if I'm meant to find my true love, then one of these bills will end up in the hands of the man I will marry. And so, when Paul gave her the dollar bill with her name on it, in that moment, she knew that she would marry him. But she didn't want to reveal this so early in their relationship. It's an astonishing and unlikely story. And as of today, Paul and Esther have been married for more than 19 years, and they have three children together. Greg Lavoie once said, when you're on the right path, the universe winks and nods at you from time to time, just to let you know. And once you start noticing these little cosmic clues, once you understand that you're on a path at all, you'll begin to see them everywhere. These clues are what Swiss psychologist Carl Jung called synchronicity. In 1952, Jung published a paper explaining that in the same way that we can connect events by cause and effect, we can also connect them by meaning. Synchronicity happens when there's a meaningful coincidence. And we find it when an event in the world coincides meaningfully with a thought or feeling in the mind. Often, this happens when you're thinking of something and then almost instantly you notice something else that's connected to what you were just thinking or feeling. Like what happened when Paul Gratchen found himself thinking about Esther and immediately noticing a dollar bill with her name on it. Why does this happen? Jung believed that life is not a series of random events, but rather an expression of a deeper order, which he called Unus Mundus. In fact, Jung's concept of Unus Mundus bears a striking similarity to Pythagoras's idea that everything in the universe is connected by a basic structure of numbers. According to Jung, we're all connected within a network that gives us a sense of universal wholeness. And this realization is more than just an intellectual exercise, it's a spiritual awakening. Jung says that synchronicity plays a role similar to that of dreams, and its purpose is to shift our conscious thinking to connect with this greater universal awareness. Jung is careful to point out that he's not denying that coincidences can happen. But at the same time, we also have to admit that there are some coincidences that are connected so meaningfully that their chances of happening would be so unlikely, so improbable, that they're virtually impossible to explain. And it's for this reason that we shouldn't ignore synchronicities when they happen. We should pay careful attention to them. Here's another common example. If you dream about someone one night and the next day you run into that same person, you should ask yourself, why is this person coming into my life at this moment? What does this mean and what's the message I'm supposed to draw? This takes us into a realm beyond the material world and it implies a deeper and unseen order in the universe. Because in a much broader sense, our whole universe and life itself can be thought of as an almost impossible coincidence. Many scientists have pointed out that the physical laws we see all around us seem to be perfectly arranged in just the right way in order to support life as we know it. We also know that there are mathematical constants in nature all around us, like the speed of light and the strength of gravity. And all of these numbers seem to be just right for our universe to contain life. If they were just a little bit different, the universe would collapse. 
or it wouldn't have the right chemical elements needed for stars or planets to form. It's a question worth asking. Is it just a coincidence that the laws of nature and the mathematical constants we see in the universe happen to be exactly the way they are, and that they just so happen to be arranged in a way that makes it possible to support life? This has led to what many scientists have called the idea of the fine-tuned universe. And if we go even deeper, we find another type of synchronicity that shows up in relation to numbers. According to numerology, when you see numbers that keep appearing in your life over and over again, in different situations and in different ways, it's not an accident. It's happening for a reason. In much the same way that a recurring dream can be understood as a message from your subconscious mind, a number that you keep seeing in your life can be understood as a message from the universe. But whether or not you take advantage of that message is entirely up to you. In numerology, these recurring numbers are called angel numbers, and they can give valuable clues into the opportunities that already exist all around you. If you stay with me, in a future video, we'll go deeper into what these angel numbers mean, how to spot them, and what they reveal about your path throughout this life. Have you noticed any strange or beautiful coincidences in your life? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm, and it helps me bring more content like this to you. Thanks so much for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next video.